Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the separation that seems to be occurring this weekend between Michael Gove and Boris Johnson over the second COVID lockdown, with speculation that it was Gove who leaked the details of the lockdown to the press. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I'm just going to check that that's working. Hopefully the audio is a lot better now. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. But anyway, on to the story. Bit spicy, this. So I was reading in the Daily Telegraph. I was first of all reading the, the headlines on the front page like I do each morning. And then if there's something really interesting, I go to the, uh, the site itself and read the article. Daily Telegraph, speculation. Now, if this is to believe, be believed rather, I may owe Dominic Cummings an apology. That doesn't happen very often or indeed ever. Uh, last Friday evening, so the national press started reporting on details of the second lockdown that the Prime Minister eventually had to announce on Saturday. The Saturday morning papers were full of it. Number 10 were quick to say that the papers hadn't been formally briefed on this and someone must have leaked it without the authorisation of the Prime Minister and they set up a leak inquiry. Oh yeah, I thought. I said at the time, this seemed like a, a farce. Just to stop backbenchers getting mad. It's been a, bit, a feature of Boris Johnson's time in Downing Street that Dominic, well, certainly when he took Dominic Cummings on, Dominic Cummings briefs the media off the record about major policy decisions as a way of testing the water. If it looks like they're going to get away with it, Tory backbenchers are not wholly against it, the, the public are sort of largely on board, then they make the official announcement later. If it looks a bit too controversial, like they're not going to get away with it, then they deny it was ever the policy and they have a rethink. It's a neat little trick. Neat little trick. But it's one that infuriates Conservative MPs because you, they should be making major policy announcements to Parliament. So they're effectively bypassing Conservative MPs. They're not happy about this one little bit. Their idea of take back control with Brexit was not giving it to Dominic Cummings. And it looks like the same trick was being pulled again at the weekend. Had all the hallmarks of a Dominic Cummings briefing. I said at the time, the thing is, the leak was of a meeting of four cabinet ministers as it was reported. It was, it was the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Chancellor Rishi Sunak, Health Secretary Matt Hancock, and, well, Michael Gove, who is the just general busybody of cabinet. And it's doubtful that there would have been any officials present. For me, in a four ministers, there a maximum of one official present. You would have thought Dominic Cummings. So if it was a genuinely unauthorised leak, it won't take that long to find out who did it. But the Telegraph, so this is a right wing newspaper. Also very anti-Covid restrictions, if you want to add some context here. It's also the paper that Boris Johnson worked for before he became Prime Minister. And one of the few employers that, as far as I can tell, hasn't actually sacked him. And they suggested that Gove leaked the details. Now, this, there is good reason to say this. After all, it was Michael Gove who did the round of interviews yesterday in order to explain the government's position. Now, although Michael Gove is a very senior member of Cabinet and he involves himself in lots of things, including Covid, You'd think to yourself, OK, something this serious, why wouldn't it be the Prime Minister himself doing those interviews? Or at least the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, more relevant minister. Why Gove? The feeling is that, I mean, Gove is considered of a cabinet of misfits to be the one who can acquit himself best in interviews. But if the feeling was that it was Michael Gove that let the cat out of the bag and all the fingers were pointing at him, then this is Johnson say, look, you caused this mess, you go and face the press over it. Because apparently they'd intended to make the announcement on Monday, not the weekend. And then during the interviews, Gove revealed that the lockdown could go beyond the intended end date of December the 2nd. Now, on most levels, this is sensible, but on a political level, far too hot to handle. It's sensible because four weeks is not believed to be long enough to get the R value below one or get sufficient control over the rate of infection to allow test and trace to cope. Independent Sage, for example, while we were waiting uh, for Boris Johnson to, to finally haul his ass on air, uh, where the, the head was mentioning to David King that in all likelihood keeping schools open would mean it would probably take six weeks. You know, you know, so to be realistic with the current lockdown plans, you might be talking six weeks needed. 
There's nothing wrong with saying four weeks and then re-evaluating it after that. So I had no issue with that part of Michael Gove's interviews yesterday, but it seems Downing Street did. You know, they came out with a statement contradicting Gove by saying that, no, 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 the lockdown measures that are going to be voted for by Parliament this Wednesday will have a definite end date of December the 2nd. There's no extension of it, no leeway. In other words, if they did want to extend it, if they got three and a half weeks later, say, and they did want to extend it, Parliament would need to vote again. Now, this is because the lockdown is in itself quite toxic for the Conservatives. In order to get his general election win, Boris Johnson had to pack out the parliamentary party with the most insane people he could find to sell his Brexit. However, surrounding yourself with lunatics is a double-edged sword. It's great when you want to push an insane policy through Parliament, you know, like a hard Brexit. But it is much less useful when you want to solve a real problem, like a pandemic. There is every chance that quite a few Conservative MPs are going to vote against this lockdown this Wednesday. It will still pass. Labour will support it. It will go through. There's no issue there. But it may well be enough that um, enough Conservative MPs vote against it to cause a bit of a schism within the party. If enough Conservative MPs vote against it, then it won't just be that it will pass because Labour will vote for it anyway. It may be that Johnson needs those Labour votes. Now, a government getting motions passed with opposition votes is almost as embarrassing as having them defeated outright. Now, were Johnson's leadership in a strong place, it wouldn't actually be that big of a deal. It would be a bit embarrassing, wouldn't be a big deal. He'd be doing something in the public interest that some in his party are not in favour of, but we know from polling a majority of the country are in favour of, and the majority of Parliament would act in the national interest, uh, and that would be that, it would all be fine. Um, even the papers aren't violently attacking it. And there's a lot of the media anti-restriction, anti-lockdown. They're not really hammering it that much. In some parts they are. But Johnson's leadership is in a very weak position. Conservative MPs are absolutely sick of him. He was never particularly considered a good leader in the past. Um, just useful for getting Brexit over the line. But his real and perceived failures over COVID have his MPs absolutely furious with him. To say nothing of his constant U-turns. You know, correspondents are increasingly talking about previously very loyal MPs, even they're sick of him. And I will say at this point, Johnson had no chance from the start, by the way. You know, we can attack him for his incompetence, we can attack him for the wrong decisions, uh, and we should do. But politically, he had no chance. Even if it had sacked Dominic Cummings and not been so useless himself, this party of lunatics that propelled him to power cannot possibly be satisfied. Nothing could satisfy them. If Boris Johnson had made all the correct decisions, or even most of the correct decisions, you don't expect everyone to be right, and he'd been genuinely led by the science, his backbenchers would still have been furious. Take Ian Duncan Smith, for example, former party leader and one of the thickest MPs in Parliament. He was complaining that Johnson had given in to the scientists. Given in to the scientists. Just consider that statement for a moment. My God, the Prime Minister has faced up to reality. What a loser. What sort of drug-addled moron even says that? At any time, never mind a time of national emergency, when facing up to reality is on page one of how to deal with this crap. But if Johnson largely ignored the correct courses of action, which he mostly has, then he gets that approval from his MPs, but then he gets blamed for the fact that the rates of infection are out of control, because you can't have it both ways. So Johnson is making it clear that this lockdown ends on December the 2nd. He knows this is unlikely to be long enough, but it's a classic Johnson move. It combines two of his modus operandi. One, kicking the can down the road, because he'll make it clear it's definitely for just four weeks' time, in the same way that two weeks ago, he made it absolutely clear that there is no way we were going to have another lockdown. It was ridiculous, in fact. Absolute nonsense. The second thing is his brainless optimism may hope that actually four weeks is just about enough. You know, the experts may have it a bit wrong, or they may be over -egging it, or maybe a miracle will happen and it'll all clear up in four weeks and he won't have to do that. Why suffer the political damage of saying it may last longer 
if it may not. You know, burn that bridge when we come to it will be the thinking. This may also explain why Gove might have leaked the details of the lockdown as well. Johnson is basically a dead man walking as Prime Minister. I think Brexit is the only thing keeping him going. Uh, once, once we get to next year, the end of the transition period. Gove surely still has ambitions in that direction himself. He stabbed Johnson in the back once, maybe doing so again. He would know how damaging a weekend announcement in the media on this most untory like of policies would go down in the party. Johnson has been reported as being genuinely upset and has even threatened to call in the police apparently in his investigation. Now that again adds a bit of very you know, very similitude to this because yeah. Usually with a leak inquiry, you keep it in-house because you are not you, you know where the leaks come from and you're not that bothered. So you keep it in-house and you go, oh, we can't find anyone. When you're really serious, when it's a genuinely unauthorised leak and you really want to find the person, you get the police involved because you know what? Detectives detect these things. Um, so that might be, if they do get the police involved, that would be an indicator that he's genuinely upset about it. And then there's another possibility for the leak. So the Telegraph also reports that no decision at the time it was being reported had been made about the lockdown, that Boris Johnson wanted to spend the weekend thinking about tighter regional restrictions first. Now, if that were the case, I'm still not convinced because if I'd think to myself, so, so when it was all announced in the media and it was an unauthorised leak, why didn't he just come out and say, no, 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 I don't know where you're getting this story from. Uh, we haven't made any decision like this. We are, it's true, having to consider some tighter restrictions and we're considering all options and we'll make an announcement on Monday. Could have done that. And then if on Monday he decided for the tighter regional restrictions, he could have said, well, you know, this is the problem when you take unauthorised briefings. But that's not what they did. They felt that they'd been browbeaten into the lockdown. Apparently, the Chancellor Rishi Sunak was dead against the lockdown. And Gove had been arguing one for weeks. Now, that's interesting. That is interesting if Gove has actively been arguing for it. So it could well be that Gove that felt that Rishi Sunak may hold sway and that the lockdown wouldn't be put in place. So he thought, right, I'll sort it. Tell the media there's going to be another lockdown. So that's why the finger of suspicion is pointing very firmly at Gove. Um, but there it is. Nice little war going on at the top of government. And the week ahead will prove very interesting in seeing just how much of a split this lockdown causes in the Parliamentary Conservative Party. The majority of Conservative MPs will vote for it. I've no doubt about that. I think probably even the vast majority will. But it'll be interesting to see how many will not. Because... We know this is going to go through. Labour will help sail it through. So if there's any Conservative MPs who, for public appearances, would like to oppose the lockdown, there's going to be enough of them to safely vote against it without reprisals. So it will be interesting. We may end up seeing 50 or more voting against it. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.